Welcome to a new devlog. It is finally time to implement NPCs into my game. Let us combine a dialogue system with behavior trees to bring this little dwarf to life. I am currently building an RPG with Godot engine and you are playing an adventurer exploring a giant mountain area. On your journey you will uncover the dark mystery that is hiding beneath the abandoned halls of a former dwarven empire. So far the player has been completely alone in this cave, which is rather boring. To spice things up a little, let's add a little company. I present to you Thalnor Colbeard. He's a grumpy dwarf, but you'll start to get used to him. I'm certain of that. He lives alone with his daughter in the upper parts of the mountain. This dwarf will be the first NPC the player will encounter in this game and by talking to him we will discover more about what happened to this desolated place. Before I did any coding whatsoever, I wanted to ensure that I exactly know what the life of Thalnor Colbeard looks like. He's a blacksmith who used to work for the Dwarven Empire but now moved himself into isolation. His daily routine involves forging tools and occasionally heading out into the mines to gather coal and ore or to hunt for food. This means that any system I already implemented into the game should be usable by the NPCs as well. Unfortunately, this is not how I initially coded it. When I first built the forging and mining mechanic, I wrongly assumed that the player is the only entity that will perform these actions. Epic fail. I spent many days and nights refactoring all my components to not be player specific any longer. Instead, both Thalnor and the player are now of type world character that can interact with any system in the world. Remember that player sprite sheet in Sprite I have shown before. That is exactly where we will add a new layer and animate the sprites of Thalnor for various animations. While pixeling the character, I also had to ensure that they align with the tool animations and dimensions correctly. Another problem with the existing sprite sheet is that it is way too small in size. Yes, the sprites are usually 16 by 16, but also I want to animate mining and forging with more anticipation. which requires more space outside the usual 16x16 square. I created a new world character, assigned the newly created sprite sheet for Thalno and dropped him into the world. The cave so far is not a great place to live in. I mean, where should our little dwarf even sleep? So I pixeled a couple of buildings and placed them into the starting area so he has a place to call home. While creating these fresh assets, I decided to make the cave a little bit more visually appealing by introducing deep chasms and minecart tracks. Those don't do anything right now, but in future they will be interactable and impact gameplay. That's for another devlog though. Interacting with NPCs will be one of the core mechanics of my RPG and I wanted to solve this by introducing dialogues. The player should be able to talk to an NPC and a dialog box should appear. Now I could go ahead and write my own dialogue system. Luckily there's already an amazing Godot add-on called Dialogic by Emilio Coppola. It is quite intuitive and it has an amazing open source community behind it that is contributing to this add-on. Installing this add-on into my game is as simple as dropping files into an add-ons folder and activating it within the project settings. Dialogic introduces various new concepts I had to get used to such as timelines, themes, characters and definitions. If you want to learn more about this amazing tool, I put a tutorial link into the description of this video. The next step was to define a so-called character within Dialogic and assign avatar frames to it. Then I realized I needed a character portrait for my dwarf, but I had no clue how to do that. So far I only created pixel art landscapes and low resolution characters. Detailed portrait faces in pixel art was something I never really attempted before. Luckily my friend Luca is a talented manga artist who taught me before some basic drawing concepts. I reached out to him and he gave me great advice on creating my first avatar in Esprite and helped me correcting mistakes. The following weeks I then proceeded practicing more dwarfs until I felt comfortable with a version that I could use in my game. In future I'm planning to create an animated version with different emotions and facial expressions. For that I need to level up my pixel art skills first. 
and I have no clue how to do that yet. Once I exported the portrait into Godot, I proceeded styling the dialog box and created a timeline for testing purposes, so I could communicate with the dwarf. Hell Thalnor. Hello YouTube, I am Thalnor Coolbeard. Dialogues on their own are interesting, but for my RPG I want to make them more interactive. For example, certain dialogues should only be triggered when the player carries a certain item. This becomes especially important once I implement quests. As a result, I had to somehow tell Dialogic about which item belongs to what character in the world. Sadly, I could not find a generic approach to this problem, so I had to create a variable for every single item, for both the player and Thalnor. Each character then connects to the signals of their inventories and tells Dialogic about these items. This allows me then to define conditions on dialogues to check for various items held by the player or the dwarf. For example, we can now trigger a dialogue in case the dwarf loses his pickaxe for some reason. When the dwarf does not have any pickaxe in their inventory, we can now show a specific dialogue for it. Now that our dwarf is able to talk, I also want him to be able to do stuff. He is a blacksmith after all and bringing him to life is something I was looking forward to for quite some time already. This meant that I had to come up with some sort of AI logic. A naive approach would have been to extend the world character script and within the process function I could add some if statements and then change the behavior of the dwarf depending on various conditions. While this is definitely a simple approach, this is not useful for my purposes, since I have to reuse a lot of the behavior logic across different NPCs. Some of that logic might even happen in a different order altogether, and certain conditions might require slight variations too. This is where so-called behavior trees come into play. Don't be mistaken, behavior trees should only be used when you are planning to have a modular system that you want to modify quickly and that should change dynamically. Also keep in mind that behavior trees are extremely difficult to debug in case something goes wrong. Personally, I'd advise against using them unless there is no better way to build your AI logic. For my purposes though, it was exactly what I needed. When I first attempted this, I had no clue what behavior trees actually do, so I watched this amazing Godot tutorial by Vinicius Gerivini to learn more. He also provided an example project that contains a behavior tree add-on. All we now had to do was to create a new node of type behavior tree and add nodes to it. Sounds simple, right? Well, I scratched my head for quite some time because I did not really know where to start. Eventually, I reverted back to the good old method of pen and paper and I defined high-level steps of actions the NPC needs to do. The dwarf should work, then rest once he gets tired and occasionally talk to the player when being approached and pausing whatever he is currently doing. Each of these steps can then get broken down into smaller conditions and actions. Most of that week, I then spent writing these conditions condition and action notes. Now it was finally time to test the logic. I was quite excited to see the dwarf working hard to achieve his dreams. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> oh well, there were definitely some strange bugs. A lot of bugs. Eventually, I ironed them all out and we are finally able to watch Thalnor doing what he does best. Behind the scenes, I introduced an energy system for each character in the game. As shown by this debug UI, Thalnor will get exhausted during work and eventually he will move to a designated resting spot to recover his energy. In future, the dwarf will head into the house, cook something there and go to sleep. For that, I first need to build the scene transition system, which currently does not really exist. Stay tuned for that. Another feature I want to implement are emotions and mood. As mentioned earlier, Thalnor can lose his pickaxe. For example, the player could just grab the pickaxe while Thalnor tries to pick it up. This is very rude and Thalnor will not like that. What is wrong with you? 
it is up to the player how they want to treat the NPCs in this game. And I think giving the player the freedom to do whatever they want with NPCs adds to the immersion of the world. With both the dialogue system and behavior trees implemented, I could now focus on creating a quest system. Quests in this game will be a bit more subtle. Instead of having a dedicated quest log that gets filled and can overwhelm the player, I want to hide quests within dialogues. By talking to NPCs, Greetings. the player will learn about the wants and needs of an NPC and can then decide to offer their help. There are some technical challenges ahead to define these quests and also have to ensure that their progress is tracked properly across the board. Some people might remember me showing off the save game system in an earlier devlog and that definitely needs to be rewritten to support quest progress. Also, there is the challenge of remembering what quests you had to do. Items such as letters or notes can help the player to keep track of what they potentially have to do for other NPCs. All of that will be shown in a future video. I cannot wait to show you all of that soon. Feel free to join our community and give me feedback on the features I've built so far. I'm happy to hear what you have to say. Subscribe to this channel for more game dev stuff and let me know down below in the comments how you are finding the recent changes. See you next time. May your forge burn bright.